Hey guys, welcome back to Med which made simple. In this video, we're gonna see about descending tracts, which is a very important topic in neuroanatomy as well as in physiology. Descending tracts includes pyramidal tracts and extra pyramidal tracts. Let's see them all in detail. Okay, the descending tracts basically carries motor nerves from the brain, most commonly from the cerebral cortex. They control the activities of skeletal muscles. And the and as you all know, the activities of smooth muscles and cardiac muscles are basically controlled by autonomic nervous system. Now, the pyramidal tracts include corticospinal tract, and corticonuclear or corticobulbar tract. The extra pyramidal tracts includes rubrospinal tract. Vestibular spinal tract, reticular spinal tract, and tectospinal tract. First, let's see about the pyramidal tract. The pyramidal tract includes the nerve fibers which pass through the pyramid of medulla. This includes corticospinal tract. In corticospinal tract, the nerve fibers arise from the cortex and they descend to the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord. In corticonuclear or corticobulbar tract, what happens is that the nerve fibers start from the motor cortex and they go till the cranial nerve nuclei in various levels of the brain stem now here you have you got to know the fact that um there is no much difference between the corticospinal tract and corticonuclear tract they both have common origin from the cerebral cortex the motor cortex and um, they both have the same pathway they both descend together what happens is the corticospinal tract even though it starts from cortex, they descend all, they go all the way to the end of the spinal cord. But what happens to the corticonuclear tract is that they start from the cortex, but they end near, they end in the like they end in the levels of cranial nerve nuclei. Okay, cranial nerve nuclei. Um, it includes like um, the facial nerve nuclei in the brainstem, the trigeminal nerve nuclei in the brainstem. They end in that level itself. So, can note the difference that corticospinal tract is longer than corticonuclear tract and uh, corticospinal tract basically gives rise to spinal nerves whereas corticonuclear tract gives rise to cranial nerves and, um, and, you, and you also have to know that these two are almost the same um, in the fact that they have common origin and a common tract, the common pathway by which they descend below okay in this picture you can see this picture is basically to give an overview about the corticospinal tract because that's the very important thing of the descending tracts okay so the dotted line in the middle shows the midline of the body and at the top of this picture you can see the motor cortex over there and from there you can see some blue fibers and red fibers arising from the cortex that is basically to differentiate the fibers the tracks we'll tell you later okay so you can see that the fibers being radiating in a pattern so that part is known as corona radiator these these fibers descend through the internal capsule and from the internal capsule they reach the medullary pyramid from the medullary pyramid what happens is you can see that the blue line the Q's H, that is the cross to the other side opposite side they descend below as lateral corticospinal tract whereas the red line does not cross the midline whereas they descend down ipsilaterally on the same side on the same side to reach the spinal cord but you can see that after reaching the spinal cord the anterior corticospinal tract decusates to the other side with the help of an interneuron and then they supply the muscles okay here you can see that 
the, the motor neuron arising from the lateral corticospinal tract supplies the distal muscles whereas the motor neuron arising from the anterior corticospinal tract supplies proximal muscles okay and you can see that uh, you can note that the blue tract is marked thicker compared to the red tract why is that that's because about 80 percent of the corticospinal tract decussates to the other side and that tract is lateral corticospinal tract lateral corticospinal tract includes about 80 percent of the corticospinal tract fibers whereas anterior corticospinal tract includes only 20 percent of the fibers of corticospinal tract and there's also one more point to notice it's that the lateral corticospinal tract starts from cortex and they go till the end of the spinal cord whereas the anterior corticospinal tract ends somewhere um, at the level of mid thoracic at the level of mid thoracic level okay now we just summarize it once again corticospinal tract is divided into lateral corticospinal tract which includes 80 percent of the fibers anterior corticospinal tract which includes 20 percent of the fibers they arise from the motor cortex of the brain they pass through the internal capsule and then through the pyramid of medulla here you got to note a point that uh, they do not arise from all parts of the cortex they arise most commonly from parts like uh, area 4 of cerebral cortex precentral gyrus and some fibers also arise from the sensory cortex of the of the brain okay what is decussation where does this occur the decussation basically occurs below the medullary pyramid as i told you earlier when we were seeing the picture decussation is basically crossing over and we have shown you that the blue line do you remember the blue line which represents the lateral corticospinal, corticospinal tract which decussated just below the level of medullary pyramid to the opposite side okay so the tract which decussates below the medullary pyramid is the lateral corticospinal tract you gotta remember this and recollect where, where does the anterior corticospinal tract decussate if you remember the picture which we shown you earlier the anterior corticospinal tract you got it yeah, you got it right. The anterior corticospinal tract decussates at the level of spinal cord. Now, what are the functions of the primordial tract? The lateral corticospinal tract is um, basically involved in skilled movements because they supply the distal group of muscles. And the anterior corticospinal tract is basically involved in posture maintenance because they supply the proximal group of muscles the corticonuclear tract is mostly involved in facial supplying facial muscles so here you gotta know the fact that the digital groups of muscles which are the muscles of hands and feet are basically involved in doing skillful activities such as um, you use your hand for writing for handling stuff like pencils that's that requires skill like those are skillful activities those activities are helped by the lateral corticospinal tract so if your lateral corticospinal tract is affected your skillful activities skilled activities are affected and the anterior corticospinal tract supplies the proximal muscles such as the muscles of thighs muscles of your arms so if your anterior corticospinal tract is affected, it most commonly affects your posture. It will be difficult for walking and running and staring straight and all that. Okay, so the corticonuclear tract, as we told, they involve in the cranial nerve formation. Cranial nerves such as the facial nerves and the trigeminal nerve. Their motor component supplies the facial muscles. Now let's get into extrapyramidal tracts. As the name suggests, extrapyramidal tracts does not pass through the pyramid of medulla. Makes sense, right? Again, these are also involved in 
posture maintenance as well as doing skilled voluntary activities or movements. Okay. They can arise from red nucleus, vestibular nucleus, reticular nucleus, reticular formation and uh, the tectum. First let's see about the rubrospinal tract. The rubrospinal tract arises from red nucleus in the midbrain. Okay. It decusates to the other side, the opposite side. It supplies the distal muscle groups. So it's involved in doing skilled movements. The next one is vestibulospinal tract. Vestibulospinal tract arises from vestibular nuclei. There are basically four vestibular nuclei, which include superior, inferior, lateral, and medial vestibular nuclei. They receive input from the inner ear. and they help in maintaining the position, the body posture in response to head position. So as if you know, like as you, I think most of you will be knowing, the inner ear has a cochlear part and a vestibular part. Cochlear part is associated with hearing, vestibular part is associated with balance. Here, as the name suggests, the vestibular spinal tract, this receives input from the vestibule of inner ear. So basically it involves maintenance of posture if you all know the inner ear the vestibular part is associated with maintaining posture right so this basically receives input from the inner ear and it sends information regarding the posture position of the head and the head position okay and it helps to maintain the body posture accordingly according to the head position okay the next one is reticulospinal tract. The reticulospinal tract arises from the reticular formation in pons and from medulla. Okay, they descend ipsilaterally, they don't decussate at all. They supply the proximal group of muscles. As told earlier, proximal group of muscles are involved in posture maintenance. Now let's see about the tectospinal tract. The tectospinal tract arises from tectum or the superior colliculus, which is mostly involved in vision. The decussate to the opposite side. They are the smallest of all the descending tracts. Okay, so they go up to the mid cervical level only, and they help in they help in movement of the head according to the visual stimulation. So, as I've told you, the superior colliculus is associated with the vision. So when they when it gets the visual input from the eyes, when they get the visual stimulus, it will help in. It will help in the movement of the head accordingly and helps in the maintenance of head posture. Now, there's something known as monoaminergic, monoaminergic pathways, which is good to know. It includes rough spinal tract. It is basically serotonergic. It starts from nucleus rough magnus in the medulla they inhibit the nociceptive pathways and they help in sensory motor coordination so basically in this in this tract the neurotransmitter which is present is serotonin the second one is ceruleospinal tract this is basically noradrenergic it starts from nucleus locus ceruleus 
and nucleus subcellulis. They also inhibit nociceptive pathways and they also help in sensory motor coordination. Now here what I want to say is compare the fact that the face spinal tract is basically serotonergic that is the neurotransmitter is serotonin the cerulean spinal tract is not adrenergic the neurotransmitter is not adrenaline or not epinephrine okay they, they both start from a different different nucleus and they both inhibit the nociceptive pathways that is the pain pathways and they both help in sensory motor coordination and this picture is again to revise everything the main corticospinal tract the main thing which you got to remember from this chapter okay the main thing the high yield concept so i'm not i'm not going to say anything just you just have to pause the video here and you're going to revise the track you're going to see the thickness of the tracks you got to see how they decussate which fibers decussate where and what all happens what all structures they pass through and which track supplies which groups of muscles and you got to remember which muscles does which work and you're done with these tracks so now tell me which tracks decussate or which tracks descended on the same side do you remember come on if you can make a list you can pause this video right here and you can make a list of the tracks which decussated and make a list of the tracks which descended on the same side it's literally it's confusing huh okay don't worry repeat the video once again from the first see it once see it twice and you get it clear you can refer to standard textbooks such as Snell's Neuroanatomy, Gray's Anatomy, Ganong's textbook of physiology, Guidance textbook of physiology and get all the concepts clear by reading those books if you don't get the concepts clear after seeing our video because the references were from those books so hope you got hope you like this video if you like this video please subscribe to our med channel med which made simple by clicking here and please like our facebook page twitter page instagram page and google post page by clicking in the link given in the description below and you can support us by donating on patreon by clicking on the link given in the description below so that we can make more videos in the future thank you